I just realized. Nice. Maybe you noticed that car over there. <laughs> That's my girlfriend from the parking lot. So maybe I should start firing up the drone and zip around now. Maybe she would come and say hello. How funny it was and the actual Karen was driving by. This time DJI put me under pressure testing one of their latest releases. Uh, when the leak started to appear on the internet, I was writing, bombarding them with emails, uh, trying to get the chance to test this. Because as from what I could see uh, from the yeah, leaked material, this, would, this was going to be an interesting product and my chance to take the plunge into FPV. Despite numerous attempts, there was no reply from GGI. But then, one week before uh, they uh, were going to launch the product, I got the confirmation that they have decided to send me a kit. I received the product on Friday in the week before the release on the 11th. I had a very limited time on Friday when the package arrived, so I thought, yeah, why not just do a fast unboxing? So I grabbed my GoPro 12, slammed it onto the table, to press record, and uh, filming the video while I was doing it, kind of hoping that I could piece it together in the edit for something that I could use for the first flight video. So after the unboxing, I hurried to put everything on charge, and then I, when I arrived later the evening, I activated the product and made sure that it was ready. But of course, the wig it was also booked with a lot of other non-drone related stuff. You ha I have a family, so sometimes I do actually need to spend time with them. <laughs> Just to be clear, I love my family. So Monday, this was the big date where everything had to go down. Sort of my planning said, okay, I need to go to the parking lot. I need to film everything that I need to film around the drone and then spend the next couple of days on and off uh, all the other tasks that I have to try and run my own business to edit a video so it was ready for the 11th for the release date. Right now I'm pretty busy uh, getting uh, the mini drone club up and running. So if you're from Denmark and have interest in uh, mini drones and maybe uh, search for a community where you can hang out and uh, share your great hobby, then uh, make sure to check the link in the description below. And you can imagine the challenge here was that uh, I could not do like a very confident video because I haven't even flown the product before and it's, uh, it's way different than uh, what I normally fly. Now I just had this one that I needed to learn how to fly the product where I usually have a controller. So having a new generation of uh, the product is really not that big. They don't fly, they, they fly in the same way uh, DJI products with, uh, with a normal uh, stick uh, yeah, base controller. Getting this uh, Dillo <laughs> would pose a challenge. So I made a decision very early on that I would basically just document my journey. So I would document my journey as a FPV pilot. With that, I was hoping to be able to show you that uh, even if you are a complete rookie and have never flown uh, FPV before, you can actually yeah, very fast, get the hang of it and uh, fly some uh, decent footage uh, with your FPV drone in as little as uh, two batteries. Maybe some of you would take three or five batteries to get there. Some of you will do it uh, right away. Just to show you that it's not as uh, frightening as at least I thought in the beginning it would be. And I must say that it's a little bit scary because this is the only thing that I have to control the Avata 2 as it is right now. It's a very safe and secure process. The only thing you need to make sure of is that you choose an area with a wide open space so you don't need to fight any obstacles while you're doing this as the Avata doesn't have any sensors in the front that will prevent it from colliding with anything. So if you... You know if you slam it into your head, it will not stop. I'm just saying slam it into something, then uh, it would definitely break. That's for sure. So I packed up everything in this uh, nice bag for the purpose. And uh, then I went to the parking lot here next to where I live. So as some of you know that uh, going to this parking lot, a lot of unexpected things can happen. I've had motorcycle gangs uh, interrupting uh, secret flights with the Mini 4 Pro. I had a hysterical woman. Uh, um, so could and big way, eh? coming and uh, trying to take photos of me claiming that I was flying a drone over her property. I've had um, a bus driver that was stepping out or like a public bus coming over to me wanting to talk with me. And it all happens every time that I, I'm out filming something that's under embargo. <laughs> so, so I have to do jump through all sorts of hoops. Um, yeah. 
to make sure that uh, I don't blow the secret uh, before time. So I was standing there in the parking lot getting ready to uh, do my first flight. And again, I was a little bit nervous because I didn't really know what to expect. So I kept postponing this by doing different tasks, going back and forward, talking to the camera, trying the pass through of uh, the goggles these two uh, lenses that you have in front of uh, the goggles here. If you tap on side of the, the goggles here, you will basically be able to see through these cameras. This is super practical. <laughs> you know, it's a little bit... <laughs> so I was walking a little bit around, testing that to see, yeah, to, yeah, to gain courage. And then I saw this uh, garbage truck. It was driving by me, okay, and I didn't really think more about that. And then it was coming back, and then it was stopping at some point, and I could see the guys were coming out of the garbage truck. There is a slight chance that they will basically come over to me. In anticipation of being approached, I decided to pack down everything that was related to the Avatar and then pull out the Mini 4 Pro as a decoy. And I was absolutely right, because one of the guys decided to go and talk to me. And because he says speaking Danish, uh, let me let me just translate this for you. He says this looks so exciting. I need to uh, go and ask what you guys are doing. I don't know how he got to that conclusion that we were multiple people. I'm saying it's only me just standing here talking to my camera. Okay, okay, he says. Uh, I was just wondering. It's actually crazy that people are so curious uh, that they can make themselves go over to a complete stranger on a parking lot asking them what they're doing. I would never do that. Would you? That's fine. I was just happy that I was able to foresee that this was going to happen. So I could preserve the secret around the Avatar 2. Determining this is not going to be a hostile confrontation, I decided to uh, yeah, put up my friendly face <laughs> and uh, explain to him what it is that I was doing, that I was standing in, in the middle of the parking lot uh, recording videos around drones. Then he's asking, what's that? Then I'm telling him, this is a drone. So then I decided to give him a demo just to show him what it's all about. I use every opportunity that I get to promote our great hobby. So I'm unpacking uh, the Mini 4 Pro and uh, telling him uh, the procedure of uh, firing up the drone. Telling him uh, that I have a remote that I'm using to control the drone with a built-in screen. Then you continue the small talk a little bit. And it helps a lot uh, with the demonstration if you uh, remember to turn on the drone. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm trying to explain the simplicity in uh, in um, the setup, that you don't need to do much to get it airborne. Then I'm getting uh, the question that I get uh, the most, how far away can it fly? And my standard answer to this is that it can easily fly the distance that you can see, which is uh, the sort of the rule in most countries that you are not allowed to fly with uh, beyond visual line of sight. But of course I gave him a number of two, three kilometers. Um, just to give him an idea of uh, how far the drone can actually fly and how great the technology is. Then I'm letting him uh, look at the screen and he's making fun that his colleague is not doing anything. So uh, now we have documentation of that. <laughs> and I'm showing him uh, like a manual point of interest and stuff like that. I'm flying around, filming a little bit here and there. Then he's asking, is it difficult to fly? And I reply, you want to try? But he says he's very, very bad at remotes and he didn't realize how easy it is to fly a Mini 4 Pro. And I would have absolutely no issues with him uh, testing it out. I've just positioned the drone in a safe attitude so it wouldn't collide with any trees and then he could basically yeah, try it out. He cannot fly towards the castle because uh, they have made some stupid uh, things in Denmark where you're not allowed to go closer than one kilometer to the castle. But again, I'm trying to convince him that flying uh, these drones are really, really super easy, uh, that you can just fly around, you can zip around on full speed and when you let go of the sticks, it basically stops. And convince him that this is basically just a flying camera opposed to the Avatar. <laughs> then he's saying thank you for the demonstration and head back to the garbage truck to continue his work. So this was another well-handled interruption of my drone flight. And I managed to capture everything that I needed for the video. And uh, in case that you didn't see this FPV beginner tutorial where I'm taking you from this to this, where I'm sipping around in sport mode uh, in less than two batteries, you can watch the full video through this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you on the next one.